Hi everybody, welcome to the Manifold channel. Let's take a few minutes to learn how to use Manifold System Release 9. All this applies to the free Manifold Viewer as well. Let's begin by learning how to launch Manifold System. How to launch Manifold System depends on the installation package that you've used. Uh, there are two installation packages for Manifold. There's a standard uh, Windows installation using Windows Installer. And uh, if you use that uh, route, when you install Manifold, you can launch Manifold from the uh, Windows Start button. Uh, the other way to install Manifold is to use so-called portable installation. And uh, most Manifold users use the portable installation uh, because Manifold evolves fairly quickly and uh, using portable installations is a way more convenient way of keeping updates in play uh, than using Windows Installer. A uh, portable installation is just a zip file, which you can see right here, for example, in Manifold 9.0.174.3. Uh, and uh, the X64 means that it contains both 32 bits and 64 bits uh, packages. When you unzip it, you get this folder right there. Click into that folder in Windows Explorer, and you'll see two bin folders. Uh, the folder called bin is for 32-bit uh, product uh, uh, execution, and bin 64 is for 64-bit versions of Manifold. We're working with Manifold. With, we're working with Windows uh, uh, 10 uh, 64 bits, so we're going to launch the 64-bit version of Manifold. And to do that, you just double-click on Manifold.exe, and that launches Manifold. I'm going to resize it a bit to make it fit into the uh, window that we're using. We're using a fairly small window here because we're filming this for YouTube in a so-called HD resolution. Uh, so that's a way smaller uh, uh, display than you get using a full-size monitor, or even better if you're using uh, two or three monitors like many people use in GIS these days. Uh, and you can see this is a typical uh, installation, a typical launch for a new Manifold uh, instance. Uh, on the left, you see panes, the project pane, the style pane, and the info pane, which are currently unpopulated because we haven't opened any projects or added any data to this new project that, that it launches with. On the right is the uh, desktop where uh, uh, windows appear when you open them up. And uh, it has some uh, help text uh, uh, for starters. For example, drag and drop files into the project pane to import data and so on. If you want to get rid of that, you can uh, just choose uh, tools options to uh, turn the option, turn this text off. You can also add more panes here by choosing uh, View, Panes, and Add Additional Panes. And this manifests several other panes in addition to these three. Uh, so uh, let's open a project. Uh, we'll start by opening a pre-existing project, which is a good way to get started. You can download this pre-existing project from uh, uh, the Manifold website, from the Product Downloads page. And to open a project, you can just drag and drop it into the map, into the project pane, or if you like, you can choose File, Open, uh, to uh, open it up in the usual way. I'm going to drag and drop so that's more convenient from Windows Explorer. So drag and drop, drag and drop this not into here into the gray spot, but into the actual project pane. And you'll see it opens that up. This is a 400 megabyte project, and you can see Manifold opened it instantly. Manifold's very, very fast uh, to open projects. Okay, in the project pane here, everything kind of up underneath one of these database cylinder kind of folders uh, is a data source that is coming in from outside of the project. It's data that's stored in a file or a database or coming in from the web, for example, in this case, Bing Street Maps. Everything down that is not underneath one of those cylinder kind of data, uh, data, data sources uh, is uh, stored inside of Manifold itself. It's actually stored in the Manifold project. Now, what a Manifold project is, it's, it's simply a a file in a single file in dot map format. So, for example, if we were to save this uh, uh, project, uh, you've seen this dot map format. This map format actually s stores all these uh, components, including some pretty big images like this ground surface dim. That's why it's a 400 megabyte file. These are pretty big, large, detailed uh, uh, rasters. Um, and that's kind of different from the way classic uh, GIS packages work, uh, because pos classic GIS packages like ArcGIS Pro or uh, uh, QGIS, they always link stuff in, so they're always working with data sources that have something stored somewhere else. If you add a layer from a shapefile, for example, to an ArcGIS Pro project, that data stays in the shapefile. Uh, if you add data from a shapefile to Manifold, you have a choice. You can either import it, in which case the data comes in from the shapefile, and thereafter it's a, it's a vector layer here in Manifold stored inside the Manifold.map project, or you can link it from the shapefile the way Arc does. Uh, now, you have that choice in Manifold because uh, um, Manifold is, in fact, a database, and things like this... Uh, uh, this map file, that's a database. That's a, a whole database inside there. And, 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 it's, and it's not just a simple database. It's a database that can store like 64 terabytes of data. And it's a parallel spatial database. It just happens to look like a JS. But it's as a result, because it's a parallel spatial database, you can actually store data inside a Manifold project. And the project will run, Manifold will run way faster for spatial things uh, than even sophisticated quality databases like Oracle or uh, PostGIS uh, uh, with uh, uh, Post, PostgreSQL with PostGIS. Okay, 
uh, onward. What we have down here is a list of what are called components, and everything here is a component. Component is just a manifold word that means item in the project pane. You can have thousands of them in a project organized within folders. We can open a, a component just by double clicking it. For example, we can double click open this map a component right there. A map component is, uh, is a component that actually doesn't contain any data inside the map. It just contains a list of layers that are other components that are in the project. Uh, and when you double click open a component, it double clicks uh, automatically docked uh, in this open area. If you like, you can undock it by right clicking the tab and choosing undock. And uh, you can see these tabs down here are the tabs for the various layers in the map. You can dock it again by uh, right clicking, choosing close. Oops, I, I closed that. I wanted to choose undock and then I wanted to choose dock. You can also dock and undock by doing a shift click. That's kind of a shortcut move that uh, manifold people uh, often use. A map automatically scales itself uh, to zoom to fit to the contents that are not a background, like a whole world, whole world background, like Bing Street Maps here. Uh, and uh, the layer tabs here are ways of controlling the layers in the map. There's, you can also do that in the Layers pane, but for right now, let's look at the Layers tab. So for example, to turn uh, Layers tabs, uh, layers on and off, you can double click them to turn them off, double click them to turn them back on. When you click uh, a layer, that moves the focus onto that layer. So if you're doing things like selections, for example, click on the OSM Structures layer. If you want to just do a selections within the OM Structures layer and not do selections within the Wiki Landmarks layer, which are a layer of points. Uh, like that. Uh, let's see. You can also control click a tab uh, to zoom to fit to that tab. For example, we can right, we can control click the OSM structures tab to zoom to fit uh, to that structures tab, or uh, control click the Venice ground surface tab to uh, zoom to fit to the entire ground surface. Uh, if you want to get back to a particular view, you can click the back back button here, just like with a uh, regular browser, to go back to previous views or forward to go back to views as well. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's. Uh, I think next we should cover panning and zooming. Panning and zooming is easy in Manifold because by default panning and zooming is always on. You can tell uh, that, that the cursor is in default mode here. Uh, to pan, uh, use the left mouse button, simply click and drag, and that immediately uh, uh, pans, in, uh, pans the map. To uh, zoom, you can either use the uh, mouse wheel to zoom in or to zoom out. Uh, or if you like, you can use the right mouse button. For example, click and drag with the right mouse, right mouse button to draw a uh, zoom box like that and manifold zooms to the box. So click and drag again to zoom to the box and you can easily reposition using the left mouse button and then click and drag with the right mouse button to uh, zoom back in. Uh, if you like uh, you can use the wheel mouse intermix with all this. You can use the back button uh, and, and all the rest. Uh, manifold has a quiet interface. It's unlike other jazz packages which tend to be uh, top heavy with lots of buttons. Uh, manifold doesn't do that. Manifold has relatively few buttons with a lot of the uh, action that Manifold gives you automatically built into, de into, into the default modes. So it's kind of like more like a smartphone, whereas the classic jazz packages like uh, Arc or uh, Q with all those buttons are more like, uh, you know, like a Blackberry with lots and lots of buttons uh, to them. Um, <clears throat> there are toolbar buttons here for, uh, for example, zoom to fit, which you, can, which you can do at any time, which will zoom to fit to the every layer in the map. Uh, in, in this case, it's zooming to fit because there's the Bing Street Maps layer there. Uh, we can control click on the Venice ground surface layer, or if we like, it's going to come up off screen. But there's, if I right clicked on that, there's a context menu here that also has zoom just off screen where we could uh, zoom to that, uh, uh, zoom to that uh, layer, zoom to fit. Uh, and uh, we can also use these buttons here, for example, zoom in, uh, click on that, and uh, zoom out to click on that. Uh, manifold people ra rarely use those because uh, you know, they're only good for really zooming in for you know, specific steps. If you want to change something uh, by a specific step, well, you can do that. Uh, but in most cases, uh, it's just way more convenient to uh, simply uh, uh, use right click and drag to a zoom box, to uh, use the wheel mouse, uh, to pan uh, with a display like this, to click the back button to get to a previous display, or to use locations, which we'll learn uh, how to use later uh, to do that. It takes about two days to get your head around uh, the uh, manifold user interface, uh, just like, you know, if you've been used to a telephone with buttons on it, like like a like a BlackBerry, and you're looking for a million buttons, you know, up here, uh, it would take you a couple of days to get fully used to gestures on the smartphone. But uh, once you do, you're glad you have you're you're glad that you have them. Let's take a look at what's in the project pane here. We opened up the map, which is a component in the project pane, and uh, you can see that it has other uh, components here, including components that appear as layers in the map. For example, the OSM structures uh, layer is a uh, vector layer. And we can turn it off so you can see that that shows uh, the various buildings that are in uh, Venice, in the area of Venice, as uh, uh, areas, which is a manifold word for uh, uh, polygons. Uh, and uh, 
if we turn that off, you can see uh, the ground surface layer is a, uh, turn that off and on, uh, is a uh, raster layer here. And you can see the ground surface layer uses a, a different icon here. The SM structures layer uses a, a map, a, a drawing icon, and the Venice ground surface layer uses an image icon that says it's a raster. Now, uh, drawing is just a manifold term for uh, a vector layer. Uh, and uh, images is just a manifold term for a raster layer. And by images, manifold means any kind of raster. It could be a train elevation raster, as, in, as is the case here, or it could be a uh, photographic imagery uh, layer like satellite imagery, or it could be a hyperspectral layer with uh, many different layers, uh, many, many different channels for hyperspectral information, any kind of raster layer. So why does manifold use drawings and images? That's because manifold is, is an exceptionally low cost GIS, and as a result, it's often used by people who are new to GIS. So they may not know terms of art like uh, vector or raster, but most of them understand that an image is something that has to do with pixels, and they understand that a uh, drawing is something that's uh, kind of different, that's kind of a, you know, from uh, Adobe, from use of Adobe Illustrator or simple uh, graphics arts packages has maybe something to do with what they might might know as vectors. Okay, be that as it may, uh, a map component like the map that we're looking at here has a bunch of layers to it, and uh, there's actually no, the map actually doesn't have any data at all on the map, it's just a container. If we right click on the map here and choose properties, uh, we can see what the map is. Uh, uh, the map is just a, a tiny little component that has like, you know, I don't know, a few hundred bytes of uh, uh, data here. It basically lists all the layers and it lists the names of the different uh, uh, components. Uh, for example, w wiki landmarks and OSM structures and the uh, Venice ground surface uh, layer that are layers in the map. But the actual map itself doesn't have any, any and doesn't contain any of that data. It just says use use layers from uh, take from use data from these different uh, components and then it has some information about them like whether they're grouped or not whether they're you know what level of transparency they have and it has a coordinate system uh, a map can have a different coordinate system than the layers that it, that it contains and we can see that here in the info pane uh, the panes are uh, non-modal they're reactive to whatever has a context and whatever layer in, in that uh, window has a context <clears throat> so for example with the uh, uh, focus on the map and the uh, uh, Venice ground surface layer being the active, we, being active, we see the map is has a pseudo Mercator projection coordinate system, and the Venice ground surface layer has a pseudo Mercator projection as well. If we click on the OSM structures layer, uh, we can see that the map has uh, still has that pseudo Mercator projection, and the OSM structures layer has a latitude and longitude projection. If we like, we can double click open the op OSM structures layer uh, in its own window. Uh, it, like I said, windows appear docked by uh, default, so let's shift click that. A window to undock it, and uh, I'll resize that into its own window. And you can see that what, what, we, what we've now done is we have the OSM structures layer open as a participant in the map, and here uh, in its own window. In its own window, the OSM structures layer, if we click on info, you can see that window has a latitude and longitude projection, and the one layer within it also has a latitude and longitude projection. And you can see that characteristically kind of spread out look uh, to uh, latitude and uh, longitude. A, a map is just a container which can uh, take whatever is in this uh, OSM structures layer and when it appears in the map, it will automatically reproject that OSM structures layer on the fly into whatever projection the map uses, in this case, Pseudo Mercator. And uh, Manifold is so fast at doing reprojections on the fly that you could have you know, a couple hundred gigabytes of rasters here in uh, different uh, projections or you know, tens of uh, gigabytes or even 100 gigabytes of uh, vectors, have them all reprojected on, on the fly, and you'll never notice that there's any reprojecting going on. It'll still be you know, absolutely this, this fast. <clears throat> okay, uh, and note that the uh, info pane is non-modal. When we switch from uh, OSM structures to the map, it's not like it's locked into some particular uh, uh, window where you have to open up that window and ask uh, for what projection it's in. The, the info pane automatically reacts to that and uh, changes. Uh, all right, uh, and notice also that we can move around data in this uh, OSM structures window, and uh, that's completely uh, decoupled from uh, what's being moved around in the map window. You can pan and zoom uh, independently, and all these different windows and all can be uh, operational at, at the same time. Uh, but they're still linked because they have uh, data in common. So, for example, this OSM structures layer, if we uh, uh, reach into here and we uh, uh, control uh, and uh, control drag to uh, select uh, objects in that in that layer. You can see that they're se selected here in the corresponding uh, uh, region in the OSM, stru OSM structures layer in the map. That's extremely convenient because what you can do is you can uh, you know kind of zoom into uh, different things here. I'm going to uh, edit select none to deselect all that, and uh, let's just select these parts right there. You can see those are selected. Uh, back here in the map, if I like, I can uh, uh, shift uh, control drag to deselect those. 
box, and you can see what's deselected here is also deselected there. So uh, everything is uh, uh, like that is linked. Uh, I'm kind of jumping ahead to how to do selection, uh, but uh, let just suffice as that uh, con control drag is a select and uh, shift control drag is a deselect. That's kind of similar to how uh, Windows Explorer works. We're selecting and uh, deselecting files in Windows Explorer. Great, so we're working with this drawing, OSM Structures, and uh, let's ask, uh, what is a drawing? Well, if you take a look at the project pane here in the manifold, you can see that for every drawing like OEM Structures, there, there's a table, OEM Structures table. That's because drawings take their data from a, uh, from a table. All the data is actually stored in a table. Uh, the drawing itself uh, stores no information at all, well, very little information at all, but no, no data at all. So if we right-click on that OSM Structures drawing and choose Properties, we can see uh, uh, what is a drawing? And uh, a drawing is just a few hundred bytes that has the name of the table that actually contains the ta the data, in this case the OSM structures table, the uh, name of the field within that table that contains geometry, in this case it's a geometry field called geom, uh, which was used to draw all these different objects, and it has a bunch of uh, style properties uh, that say how to draw these things, how to present them in the visualization. But all the data is actually in the OAM structures table. We can see what that uh, OAM structures table looks like by uh, opening it either by double clicking it here or by right clicking uh, on the layer tab either in the map or here in this window and choosing open table so you can see how that uh, uh, that a uh, context menu works and uh, looks like and click open table uh, the t open table the table opens docked let's uh, right click that tab and choose dock down to uh, dock that table below uh, the main map view and uh, that allows us to see both the map and the instructors table you know, we're kind of kludging this a little bit with, you know, with in terms of docked windows because normally, you know, when you're working with Manifold, you're working with the full screen or with a monitor or two. And what people usually do is they undock the map or undock tables. And, you know, if they've got a couple of monitors or three monitors, there's plenty of room to spread all over the, you know, the Windows desktop, you know, where you can keep all your windows open so, so you can see everything simultaneously, what you like. Since we're working with YouTube, we've got to kind of jam it in here into a smaller display. So we're going to, you know, keep these things docked below. Uh, okay. Uh, looking at what the OM structures table is here, we see that it's got uh, a few attribute fields. It has an index field. It has a name field, which is a text field. You can hover the mouse over that to see it's in Varcare. It has a geometry field, which contains the geometry for all the objects. It has a height field, which is a numeric, and a sh the length and the areas. And that's because these all came in from a, uh, a, a shape file that actually had the structures as uh, shape files with those, with those co uh, co computed. Uh, we did this, we did that, and we set up this project to make it look uh, very much like the uh, famous uh, Esri ArcGIS Pro project that also uses Venice, so that the uh, many Esri people who use both Esri and Manifold can, you know, kind of feel comfortable in this tutorial and see, you know, the same sort of data. Okay, uh, onward. Um, let's see. Uh, we can create as many uh, drawings as we like uh, from the from the same table using the same geometry. So, so simple way of doing that is just to right is to click on the same structures. Uh, uh, component in the map and to choose copy or just control C and then choose paste or control V uh, paste again and what we've just done we, we've copied the structures uh, drawing we've met and we've pasted it as to new drawings one called structures 2 one called structures 3 uh, let's double click those open there's OEM structures 2 I'm going to shift click that to undock it and let's shift uh, click shift click that to undock it as well and if we look at what these uh, uh, drawings are that we created, okay, let's resize that. There's a two, three. Uh, let's uh, right-click on three and choose properties, and we can see that just like this OEM structures drawing, uh, it's a very simple thing. It has the name of the table from which it takes data, and it has the name of the field, the geometry field, in the table from which it takes geometry, and uh, that tells a, a manifold how to draw this OEM structures thing, three table. Now all these three windows are completely in independent in terms of how they can be panned and uh, zoomed because they're three independent drawings. They can be styled differently, they can be moved differently, uh, and uh, all that is uh, uh, easy to do. However, they do have the uh, characteristic that since they're, since they're all based on the same uh, geometry field, if we uh, select something in, in, the t uh, uh, in any one of these uh, 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 drawing windows, it selects it in all of them because what it's doing here is actually selecting stuff in the table. Uh, and let's move this out of the way here a bit. So in the OEM structures table, if I scroll down here, I'll find here, there you go, the, uh, well, the easiest way to do this is just to file filter, a view filter selected to show only the, only the selected records. Uh, anything that you select uh, in, in a drawing also selects the corresponding records uh, in the table uh, for, for those objects in, uh, in the table. Uh, now let's uh, undo the uh, selection here. Oops, uh, select all. Let's. Uh, Select none. 
I just did that with the keyboard short, shortcut and I'm going to turn off the table here and let's look at how we can uh, style these uh, uh, three drawings differently. D differently. So for example we can choose OEM Structures 2 and here in the style pane uh, I'm going to style the fill area a little bit differently. We'll co cover the style pane later but for right now I'll just choose a different styling. Let's choose a pastel. So there we just styled that with the pastel. Let's choose OEM Structures 3 and you can see the style pane automatically reacts to uh, uh, the different uh, uh, to the, whatever there's a context window. So let's make this a uh, uh, let's let's make the fill color this uh, a fixed fill color. Let's make it Atlantic blue. So there we have OEM Structures 3 uh, using that fill layer. And if we like, we can drag and drop OEM Structures 3 uh, into the map uh, here in the project pane. OEM Structures 3, drag and drop it in the map, and we see that layer now appears above OEM Structures. Uh, a layer gets dragged and dropped uh, immediately above whatever was the uh, active layer. Uh, when you drag it and drop it. And so let's drag and drop OEM Structures 2 into the map. So that appears as well. If I turn that off, you see OEM Structures 3. Turn, turn off OEM Structures 3, you see OEM Structures beneath it. Since these are the same objects, they overlay perfectly so they cover each other up when you uh, turn them on and off. Uh, all these can appear uh, completely uh, independently of each other. Since the drawings take uh, no space whatsoever, I mean just a few hundred bytes, uh, and Manifold can handle uh, terabytes of data easily. Uh, drawings are an extremely convenient way of creating what are sometimes called themes where you can take the same data and visualize it using a uh, different styling uh, for our different presentations and uh, show it in different windows with different maps uh, in different circumstances and uh, that makes it really easy to uh, you know get exactly the, the look of data uh, th th that you want. Uh, maps in particular as you can see I'm going to undock this map so we can you know move it around more conveniently and again I have to apologize for using f such a small a tiny window here in YouTube, you know that that's uh, that makes it harder to work with all this stuff. Like I say, when you're working with a full-size monitor, you know all these windows are big monitor, uh, big wind can be big windows, and they're a lot easier to use. Uh, a map shows the layers, with the uh, leftmost layer being the highest layer. For example, the Wiki Landmarks layer here is the highest one. Well, actually, actually, excuse me, the Labels layer is the highest one. We can turn that off. Then turn off Wiki Landmarks layer. The OSM Structures layer comes next. OEM Structures 3 layer, then OEM Structures, then the Venix Ground layer, and then finally the uh, Bing Maps uh, background layer uh, uh, that, that, I'm, that I'm using. Uh, let's, uh, let's work a bit with uh, let's work a bit with layers so, to see what you can do with layers. And to do that I'm going to simplify the presentation here a bit. I'm going to close these uh, windows here. Right click on the title bar and close. Right click on that title bar and close. And uh, right click on uh, this title bar and close. Uh, and uh, here's, the, uh, here's our map window. And let's uh, get ready. These guys from the map. There's delete from map, and choose that. Delete from map, and turn the wiki OEM structures layer back on. The wiki landmarks layer back on, and um, actually let's just leave the uh, wiki landmarks layer on. And uh, let's dock this map again. Right click and dock it to get the biggest screen view possible in the small window. And uh, let's uh, control click on that to uh, zoom to fit on on, on those uh, on those maps. Uh, when you when you uh, when you click on a layer and make it the active layer, uh, that puts the focus onto that layer. Uh, and when you have the focus on that layer, you can do things onto that in that layer, like for example, uh, pick uh, objects in that layer. So, for example, uh, to uh, alt click means to pick an object in Manifold. And alt clicking, a, for example, that point by alt clicking on it uh, means to uh, pick it for editing, and it opens up uh, with the attribute visible in the in the values. Uh, uh, pane. Uh, if the info pane was closed, alt clicking this would automatically have opened the info pane and switched it to values. We can switch the coordinates uh, mode to see the coordinates of that, of that uh, component in the coordinates tab. We can edit these on the fly here. We can, if we edit them and choose update record, that'll move the point. So that's a good way of uh, convenient, exactly moving a, uh, a point to a desired location. Um, and uh, you can uh, uh, click again to uh, sh uh, shift into editing mode. That's another way to switch back and forth between uh, values and coordinates. And that allows you to uh, drag this editing handle to drag the point to a uh, uh, new location. Let's, uh, but, but with the focus on the wiki landmarks, we can't uh, click on. Uh, turn this back on. We can't alt click something here. If I try to alt click uh, that, uh, it's not going to work. And, and the reason we do that is, uh, you know, only with the active layer you can alt, you can alt click an object because that makes it easy to alt click on this point there without accidentally, you know, alt clicking on the structure that that surrounds it. But if we uh, click on the uh, structures, uh, then we can all click that structure uh, to pick that one. Uh, let's go back here to uh, let's pick something more interesting. Uh, for example, uh, let's all click this structure right there, uh, which is the Biblioteca uh, Nacional by St. Mark's Square. 
And uh, going back and forth between coordinates, we can see the coordinates, which are all these coordinates that define, you know, this object. And to pick any of these uh, coordinates there, you can see how the, uh, you know, the big editing handle is moving. Uh, and uh, there's often different ways to do the same thing in Manifold. For example, uh, choosing between the different tabs or uh, clicking on something here to move something around. So that, that way, whatever is uh, most optimal for the particular workflow that you're in, uh, you can, uh, uh, you can uh, kind of get to that. Now, there is, by the way, a shortcut, for example, if you're working some layer here. Let's say your map has uh, lots of layers, uh, hundreds of layers. And by gosh, you just can't remember what layer you know, something is in to switch to that layer to be able to, uh, to alt-click it. In that case, you can shift alt-click it. For example, let's shift alt-click uh, the Basilica San Marco. And that'll immediately uh, uh, pick it no matter what layer it is in. And it'll make whatever layer it is in the active layer. For example, the OSM structures layer. And there it is right there. Go to coordinates mode. And uh, coordinates mode, like I say, lets us do all kinds of cool things, which we'll see in other videos like editing. For example, we can shift-click and drag the editing handle here to drag all those uh, uh, coordinates uh, together at once. And if I click Update Record here, that's going to move the Plaza San Marco uh, from, I uh, uh, move the Basilica San Marco from here on the uh, plaza out into the lagoon. We're not going to do that. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to right click here and choose Undo Changes. So uh, that will undo, the, undo those. Let's work with some of the other panes, in particular the uh, transform pane. And to do that, let's work with wiki landmarks. When I click on a, a layer here, notice that if something was picked in one layer and you click on another layer, then that whatever's in the prior layer gets uh, unpicked. And uh, let's uh, control click on that layer, tap to zoom to fit to wiki landmarks. Let's turn off OEM structures. So now we just have uh, these guys right here in, in view. And we'll work with the transform pane. Uh, to bring that into site, we'll choose view, panes, transform. And uh, Manifold remembers the last thing that you did and the last, uh, you know, sorts, sorts of panes that you work with uh, so that uh, you know, the next time you fire it up, the uh, system is organized the same way. So if you're working with the transform pane, you know, fair amount, you're not going to have to worry about turning it back on all the time, uh, which is kind of cool. Uh, and the transform pane is uh, kind of like the equivalent of an Esri GeoParsing toolbox. It can have hundreds and hundreds of, of uh, uh, templates in there that are different tools. And it's, it's also non-modal, so that whatever is the active window, it'll automatically react to that and it'll remember the settings for whatever was the active window that it was last used with. So we're working here with the map uh, uh, window, and uh, uh, I'm going to start by choosing the layer with which I want to work. Let's choose Wiki Landmarks. And, uh, and I'll choose whatever field I want to work with. And uh, uh, you can see, uh, uh, depending on the different fields uh, that you choose to work with, the, there are different templates. For example, the comments field is a text field. So if, to work with text type things, you work with maybe uppercase, lowercase, concatenations, regular expressions, stuff like that. Uh, to work with uh, geometry fields, there you might work with buffers or centroids or uh, topology overlays and, and that sort of thing. And uh, we're going to work with a buffer, so I'm going to work with the geometry field for the wiki landmarks uh, layer. And uh, to work with buffers, I'm just going to click on buffers. And uh, we'll, st we'll start by doing a buffer uh, buffer zones around each of these points. Now, the units of measure for the buffer zones for the, for the distance the buffers are degrees uh, or radi radial measurements. Now, why is that? That's because if we click on the info pane, uh, we see that the wiki landmarks uh, layer is in latitude and longitude projection, which uses degrees as a unit of measure. Uh, that's kind of goofy, and it's kind of inconvenient working with such things, because you kind of got to do translations on the fly. So, for example, make a buffer zone that is 0, 0 0.1 uh, degree uh, in radius, I'll do a preview of that, and uh, you can see a classic problem working with latitude and longitude uh, projection uh, coordinate system where uh, the value of a degree uh, is different uh, going north-south than it is east and west uh, on, on most places on Earth, every place except for the equator, and exactly the value of the degree in, in, either, in either of those cases uh, will change depending on where you are as well. Uh, this, by the way, shows a preview, which is a very convenient manifold feature. Uh, and previews are cool. We can set it to a uh, various opacity. Uh, we can do uh, split screen effects, so you can see, if, you know, previews for part of it, and you know, and choose a and, and part of it with, with not a preview. Uh, let's hide that preview. Let's not use it for right now. Uh, and to avoid the the goofiness of having to try to figure out, you know, you know what radius I want here for the buffer zone, let's quickly reproject the wiki landmarks uh, layer into uh, a meter based projection. Uh, that's easy to do. Uh, just go here to uh, the info pane, and uh, here choose the coordinate system picker, reproject component, and I can change the from the latitude and longitude to uh, let's make it pseudo mercator. And uh, there it is. There you can see Manifold has a favorites list here, uh, which uh, lets you choose uh, the two built-in favorites, the latitude and longitude. You can add whatever favorites you want. You know, many people often have a dozen favorites or more. Uh, if you want to choose any of the seemingly infinite number of projections that Manifold knows, which are basically 
you know, pretty much everything that you've uh, that you've ever heard of. So, for example, it's all the many thousands of uh, projections that uh, uh, EPS G knows. Uh, Manifold uh, does not use PROJs, uh, uh, the open open source library, so it doesn't have to wait around for a PROJ to get updated. Uh, when EPSG gets updated, Manifold will typically update within a week or two of the EPG, EPSG database being updated. And in addition to EPSG, Manifold also has, you know, a few thousand of these so-called standard projections uh, that are also available. And uh, you know, you can find whatever they are by, for example, for everything for use in Belgium, B E L G. Okay, there you get those. Just type it into the filter pane here, and it'll filter that list down. Or if there's an EP, EPSG list that you want, like uh, you know, 2321, let's see what that is. That'll show you everything that's related to that. The filter box is very handy when working with uh, thousands of options. Or you can do custom projections that allow you to choose from a, you know, a base of a whole lot of different base projections and do a lot of different variables and different bases and all the rest. And, uh, but like I say, most people use uh, either EPSG or they uh, just use the uh, you know the favorites list of ones that they tend to use a lot. Uh, and to uh, reproject uh, the uh, uh, Wiki Landmarks link, just click Update Component, and boom, it's done. It's been reprojected. It's it's that quick. Uh, and uh, now, if you look in the info pane, you'll see that it's uh, in Suda Mercator. Uh, we'll have to reset the uh, uh, trans uh, transform pane by. Uh, uh, either clicking refresh or by choosing a different transform. Now we go back into the buffer uh, transform. You'll see that the units of measure are meters. So if you do so, and, and if you want to click, you can see there's all these uh, linear um, units of measurements that are available. And let's make that buffer uh, 200 meters in radius. Click preview, and you can see that uh, generates a nice round uh, uh, looking uh, buffer, uh, which is in uh, since this is now Suda Mercator and the map is also in uh, Suda Mercator. And it still remembers that we've set the opacity in, in, in previews to 50%. Now, if I actually want to create those buffers, I kind of got two choices here. I can put the result to the same field, uh, which means we're going to replace the points that are in the wiki landmarks drawing with uh, polygons that are circular polygons that are buffer zones. Uh, Manifold, unlike uh, other GIS packages, which uh, other GIS packages tend to be limited to only points in a layer or only lines in a layer or only polygons, areas in a layer, uh, Manifold can have a mix of objects in a layer, so you can have points, uh, lines, and polygons in a, in a layer if you want. We call we call those points, lines, or areas in Manifold, uh, and uh, so you can actually just you know replace all the points in this layer with uh, polygons that are that that shape. But if you don't want to mess with the Wiki Landmarks layer, you can send the results somewhere else. For example, to a new table, and we'll call this new table and drawing buffers, and uh, let's call this uh, buffers table. And uh, now when I click Transform, it'll automatically create a new table and drawing and, and save the, res uh, the, the result of Transform to that into uh, something called Buffers. Click here on OSM Structures to put the focus there and drag and drop Buffers in. So Buffers comes in above the uh, Wiki, landmark, Wiki Landmarks uh, layer. And see, you see, it's that easy to just create a new layer, which is the uh, spatial result of a geoprocessing tool to use Azure Nomenclature you know, from uh, the Transform pane. The new buffers uh, layer appears uh, using a uh, default styling. You can see it's a default gray styling. And if we want to change that style with the focus on the buffers layer, uh, we click on style. And you can see that the style uh, pane, like all the other panes, is non-modal. It reacts to whatever it has that context. For example, the wiki landmarks uh, layer has this for a point uh, style. And buffers just still has all the default uh, styles there. Uh, uh, as I said earlier, other GIS packages can have only points or only lines or only areas. Uh, you know, polygons in, in, in a layer. So they tend to have simpler uh, style uh, presentations where there's only uh, one section because there's only uh, either points or either lines or uh, areas. Because Manifold can have all three. The style dialog has three sections, one for polygonal areas, one for lines, and one for points. So we want to change the fill color. Well, let's change the uh, border, uh, the, the stroke color of these uh, buffers. And we can do that just by changing this. Let's change it to bright orange. And now let's change the fill color to some other color. Oh, let's change it to this, which is great. That's a little too. Let's do something snappier. There, I like that better. No, that's kind of dull. Let's, uh, let's use that. That's nice and bright. That's prettier. And uh, I tend to, I prefer stroke colors that are black, so I'm just going to move this back to black. Uh, there's a whole video that cho shows you how to work with uh, uh, style. Uh, and uh, for example, this big uh, con control here changes a whole bunch of things at once. And uh, so you, you can. Uh, you know, you can change all that as you like, and let's go back to using the, uh, you know, what we used. Uh, and uh, I'll encourage you to watch that other video because uh, style has just enormous amounts of uh, things that it can do. You can just change virtually anything uh, imaginable. 
Uh, and uh, one part of, that you might associate with style, but really isn't, is kind of transparency. It's in the in the layers pane. Let's call the layers pane up. Choose View Panes uh, Layers. And uh, if we wanted to change the buffers of transparency, we can change it here from 100% to uh, 50%. So that changes the transparency of an entire layer. The layers pane is a handy way to work with uh, layers when you have hundreds of layers. Uh, in, a, in a map, which you can do in Manifold. That's easy, easy enough to do. The layers pane you can also use to group layers. So, for example, you can, you know, if you have a if you have a bunch of hydrology layers like uh, lakes, streams, uh, canals, and you know stuff like that, you you might want to group all those different water type layers into a single layer called water or hydrology, single group called water or hydrology, and that would appear as a single tab here. So you could turn all those layers off simultaneously in a group with, uh, with just one tab. So there's all kinds of cool stuff to do in, in the layers pane. And we'll learn about that in other videos. We're zooming through this uh, quick tour of panes uh, where we've seen the uh, layers pane, the style pane, the transform pane. And uh, let's do one more big one, which is the select pane. And uh, to work with the select pane, uh, to, I'm going to use the OSM structures layer. Let's turn that back on. And uh, let's turn off uh, wiki landmarks. And uh, let's kind of zoom in here to the OSM structures pane so we have layers have a less busy display. And to call the select pane up, uh, you guessed it, we're going to uh, uh, choose View, Panes, uh, Select. And uh, the select pane is a, is a pane which a lot of people use all the time. So many people in Manifold have their panes arranged with the uh, project uh, style and info pane on one side. And in a full-size display, they'll have, they'll have this docked on the right side of the screen because you can dock panes to the left or to the right. They'll have the transform pane and the select pane docked on the right. Or they'll have them uh, undocked and I undock that off screen. But let's uh, bring it back on screen. And they'll have the various main panes that they work with, you know, kind of positioned so they can see, you know, a large uh, central display where they're actually working. And uh, big panes like the transform pane, the layers pane, and the select pane available uh, in undocked form uh, to use as they like. Let's, let's dock that to the left again. Okay, uh, so uh, what, are, what is the select pane uh, used for? Let's, um, let's open up the open, open structure, op, OEM structures uh, table. And uh, I'll dock it down so now we can see uh, OEM structures and we can also see uh, uh, the table uh, for that. You can see that uh, in the table here, not all the objects have, uh, have a name to them. So for example, if, we, uh, if I, uh, I'll click on here, uh, the Basilica San Marco has a name and uh, down here this uh, library has a name, uh, but a, a lot of the others uh, uh, objects uh, don't have a name uh, to them, they just, they just have null. So suppose here in the OEM structures table, uh, in, in, in this map, I want to select uh, uh, all the objects that are, have non-null values, that have names uh, in, the, in the name field. And that's easy to do. In the select field, I'm going to start by choosing the layer I want to work with, OEM structures, OSM structures, and I choose the, name, the field I want to work with, name. And I'll choose this uh, template right there. And I want to find everything in, na in name that's not null. And I want to replace the selection. So I'll just click select. And right away, that selects everything that's uh, uh, not null. All these uh, uh, objects that are in red selection color are not null. And I'm going to turn off that uh, alt thing there by all clicking uh, else outside an object. So that's, that doesn't uh, bug us. All right, well, that's cool. Now, suppose I want to further refine this. I, I want to find all these objects which not only uh, have a, uh, uh, a uh, name in, in, the, in, in the name field, but they also have a height greater than or equal to 17. Uh, well, that's easy to do. What I can do is I can uh, uh, kind of pop up here, and uh, instead of the name field, I will choose the height field. And for the height field, oh, and notice, by the way, how the not null kind of appeared as a recently used uh, expression. This is a handy way of getting back to uh, uh, all the different uh, types of templates that you have available for select. Or you can use the filter field here to find uh, things that, uh, you know, contain, you know, values of interest. So for, in the OEM structures uh, layer for the height field, I'm going to search. And I'm going to search every place where the height field is uh, greater than or equal to a value of 17. I can round that or not round it if it's a floating point. That's always uh, that's always convenient. I will do no rounding. And the action here, if I choose the default action to, when I click select to replace the selection, that's simply going to replace everything here with everything that has a height of 17 or above. I don't want to do that. I want to intersect with the existing uh, uh, selection to get everything that has that is in the existing selection, namely has a name in the name field, and also has a height of 17 or above. So I'll click seven, uh, click select, pre select, and that will give me everything that is uh, both has a name and a height of 17 or above. I can click uh, here in the OEM structures table. I can click view, filter, selected, just to show selected records. And you can see we have indeed selected all of them. Every, all the ones that we've selected have a height greater than or equal to 17, and they all have uh, a name field 
uh, in the uh, uh, yeah, 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 they have a name value uh, in the name field, uh, and uh, the, you know the, the power of the of the select pane is, is is really spectacular because you know you have all these abilities to choose all kinds of different uh, sophisticated uh, uh, conditions. For example, if you're working with text fields, you can say text that contains something or doesn't contain something, or has a regular expression, or uses, or you can actually do use expressions. For example, not just values, but you can actually do a computed expression here. Uh, you know to uh, uh, use all kinds of sophisticated functions, and then you can take whatever the result is is selected in that step and combine it with previous selections using these boolean methods such as add to selection and intersect invert with replace selection and this select pane as a result in a series of steps you can do all kinds of incredibly sophisticated selections which make it easy for people who even who don't know SQL to uh, do uh, very complex and uh, sophisticated uh, selections that are exactly what they want. But if you do know SQL, or if you want to learn SQL, there's also this cool button down here called Edit Query. And when you click on that Edit Query, it'll take wh whatever what you see here that's uh, set up in the uh, selection pane, and it'll pop up in a command window that's preloaded with the SQL that's required to do what that uh, select pane uh, uh, would, would do for you. Uh, and uh, this is a typical uh, command window. I'm going to close the structures table here to get more of the command window. And the command window basically has, these are all comments fields here that tell you uh, how the select pane was set up. And this is the uh, SQL text uh, that it created. Select star from OEM structures table where height is greater than or equal to 17. Well, that's simple, isn't it? Uh, I mean, it really is. And uh, uh, you can see down here is the query builder that has a, a huge number of uh, SQL statements and operators and Couple aggregate functions and other functions and types and vector types and you know all that other stuff. Manifold has a huge and sophisticated uh, SQL, and um, this pane down here is a kind of a convenient uh, scratch pad where you can drag and drop a table into it and uh, get all the fields that are available from that table. So, for example, suppose you want to uh, uh, you know select everything not from height but here from uh, shape length or shape area. Double click on that and it automatically adds to that double click on that to select that and uh, let's move that back to height by double clicking on this. So you can do that, uh, you can build queries here which uh, greatly reduce the keyboarding especially when field names or table names are very long. You can just uh, you know, pull them from this uh, table, from this uh, pane here uh, to use there and you can drag other tables in here as well uh, you know, that, that, uh, that uh, fit in. So all that's extremely convenient and it's uh, just a wonderful way uh, to learn how to work with uh, SQL. Okay, let's turn off the command pane and uh, move on. We've moved fairly quickly in this fast-paced video, so let's uh, do a quick refresh. Uh, I'm going to de deselect everything here by choosing Edit, uh, Select None. Uh, these are some you know, select commands that you have here in the main menu, Select Inverse, uh, and uh, Edit, Select Inverse. And uh, there's also uh, keyboard shortcuts, for example, Control-I is Select Inverse. Uh, Control-A is a Select All, as you might expect. Shift-Control-A is Select None. Or you can do, uh, if you don't remember those, Select All, Select None, and so forth uh, from, from here. Uh, so uh, uh, we learned how to uh, navigate by uh, basic uh, panning, which is the left mouse, click and drag to uh, pan. Uh, we learned how to zoom box by using the, the right mouse button, right click and drag, uh, zooms in. Uh, and we learned about these buttons here, how to uh, move back and how to move forward, just like you would, just like you would with the browser. Uh, let's. Uh, uh, we also learned how to alt click. For example, we can uh, alt click uh, uh, within the. Uh, 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 the you know the active layer to uh, uh, see the attributes and you can actually edit all these if you can double click on that if you want to change the name of the Basilica San Marco which I don't want to do uh, or the uh, uh, coordinates we you can edit coordinates and uh, and use those those for editing uh, we also learned about uh, uh, control click to uh, uh, let's uh, unpick that and uh, control click and drag to uh, select and uh, shift control click and drag to uh, deselect. Uh, so uh, all that's great. Now let's learn a different, way, another, yet one more way of navigating. That's what are called locations. You can see this thing here called Venice, and if you double click that open, you'll see it's just a, it's just an, it just gives a list that shows the center, and uh, what an entity, what it works with, and, and a scale. And uh, locations automatically uh, appear up here in the locations button. So when I click Venice in that locations button, it takes me to uh, that stored location. This is what uh, Esri calls bookmarks. And uh, those are extremely easy to uh, to do. Uh, to create, for example, we can zoom in here, right click and drag to zoom in. Let's create a location that zoom that zooms in on uh, the Basilica San Marco. Save current location, and uh, I'll click that to uh, rename it. Let's call that San 
Marco. Great. And uh, let's go back to the uh, Venice location. And now we have a location called San Marco. Let's go back to the Venice location. And uh, let's uh, right click and drag here to uh, zoom into uh, the uh, Rialto Bridge. And let's create a location for this. Save current location. Let's call that uh, Rialto. Uh, the Rialto Bridge is where you go to uh, buy overpriced uh, jewelry and other souvenirs in Venice. It's, uh, it's, it's wonderful jewelry, but you know, the prices aren't exactly the best. Uh, and uh, uh, if we like, uh, we can uh, let's uh, let's uh, let's uh, control click on Bing Street Maps to uh, you know locations can be anywhere. Uh, let's control click on, on Bing Street Maps and uh, let's uh, right click and drag here into the United States, and uh, we'll uh, zoom down here to into Massachusetts, uh, to Boston. Yeah, let's zoom a little closer into Boston. And let's zoom all the way to uh, Boston Common, which is right about there. And so let's click, click a location for Boston Common. Save current location. And uh, let's name that uh, Boston Common. There we go. And uh, so now we have uh, several locations that are available. For example, we can jump to Venice, or we can jump back to uh, Boston, or we can jump directly to the Rialto, uh, and uh, so on. And uh, locations are instantaneous. They, they instantly move to wherever you want to go. Uh, and because they're components in the project, if you uh, save the project, uh, the uh, uh, locations are saved uh, with the project as well. You can see this little star here. This indicates we haven't saved this project uh, as we, since we've made changes to it. So let's click File, Save As. And uh, let's uh, save that as uh, My OSM Venice. And we're going to save uh, a 400 uh, a megabyte file now as a, uh, as, a, as a as a new file. So click save and save that quickly. As you can see, Manifold is really, really fast. I mean, it's just unbelievably fast. Uh, and uh, it's also fast to open. So we can close the project. And uh, now let's uh, pop open uh, you know, another file again. Which one should we pop open? Then we can f the original or the new one? Let's pop open the original one. Uh, click that and I'll click open. And it opens that quickly. And that's the original one. It doesn't have the uh, locations. Now I can uh, click File Open. Let's open the new file that we saved. And you can see these are 400 megabyte files that we're opening here. And uh, unlike Esri's ArcGIS Pro uh, or anything else, the files open absolutely instantly. You can see it. That really does take about a tenth of a second or half a second to open it up. And a map that has here, you know, about 400 uh, megabytes worth of layers, most of which are in this uh, very large uh, ground surface layer here, you know, which, which is the raster. All that is still there, and all the locations are still there. We can go to Boston Common, and uh, back here to uh, uh, San Marco, and uh, let's go to Venice uh, overall. Uh, let's do uh, one more thing uh, uh, for, that's a lot of fun. I'm going to add another image server layer here. Uh, we're going to use an add a Google Satellite layer. And to do that, I'll just right-click here into the Project Pane, choose Create, New Data Source, and uh, from the uh, Favorites menu, I'll choose Google Maps Satellite. And bang, it's that quick. We just created that layer. Let's drag and drop that layer in over top of the Bank Street Maps layer. I'm going to turn off the Bank Street Maps layer. And I'll also turn off the Venice Ground Surface layer since that hides a lot of what's going on. And uh, well, while we're at it, let's turn off OSM structures as well so we can see you know, the Google Maps satellite layer in, in all its glory. And uh, everything, of course, still continues to work. So, for example, we can. Uh, uh, click on San Marco, and you can see there's the Plaza San Marco in wonderful high resolution. Google's so high resolution that you can actually see the shadows of the four uh, statues of the bronze horses that are on the pediment of the uh, basilica, great basilica. Those four horses were brought from Byzantium when it was looted in uh, 1204 by the Venetian Crusaders. Uh, and there's the, the famous uh, Campanile, and so on. Let's go, to, uh, let's go to the Rialto Bridge. There's the Rialto Bridge, which has shops up and down the bridge here. You can see the awnings for the shops. And uh, let's go to uh, Boston Common. And uh, here we see the incredible detail of Boston Common. Uh, you can zoom right in and uh, you can count individual people on the street. Uh, Google's got pretty cool resolution. So, you know, you can use Manifold as a tool for uh, traveling anywhere in the world. Uh, and, it's, and it's there and it all works. Uh, as you can see, the interface is extremely fast. It's very convenient. Uh, we haven't touched how to do some of the, uh, uh, you know, really ultra cool things that, uh, you know, that can be done. Uh, in Manifold, uh, for example, like editing, we haven't uh, worked at all, done, taken a look at all with working with rasters. It takes about two days to get your head around this uh, wonderful, magnificently fast and efficient uh, uh, user interface for navigation. Once you get your head around it, uh, you're never going to want to go back to uh, using anything else. Uh, 
and uh, you can do everything with astonishing speed, and, and it's, it's, it's a lot better than apps like uh, Arc or Q, which are great apps, but you know they, they do use older technologies. So uh, it's well worth investing in this. Check out the other videos to learn how to do things like editing and use the many other features of Manifold. I hope you've enjoyed this, this video. You can do all this in the free Manifold viewer. Tell your friends, uh, thanks for watching, and goodbye from Manifold land. Well, that was fun. Uh, if you want to see more, visit us at www.manifold.net. Uh, as always, Manifold delivers the world's most advanced, highest quality spatial products for GIS and DBMS at a low price that you can afford. Once again, that's uh, manifold.net. See you soon.